you know, you brought up the the live uh, sonar. I mean, the d- different manufacturers have different names for it. I know Humminbird just came out with their version of it. Um, Lorantis had theirs. You know, I think Garmin was the first to come out with it, Panoptics. And, yeah, the Panoptics, yeah. Yeah, so what, what you know, it, we, we've talked about, too, like just how great, um, you know, mapping has got. And it's, it's, it's got to be a little frustrating when you've really taken the time to learn a fishery, learn all the little nooks and crannies of a body of water, and then mapping this, like, like this mapping that's out now, it's like, it shows everything. Some of these maps are so detailed. You wonder like what, so you've got that, right? And that's been around for years and years now, but then you've got like live the live sonar kind of revolution that's happening. What just what are your thoughts on all that? And if if it could be harmful, beneficial, just in general? Well, my thoughts are, and you've you've heard my grumpy old man rant uh, quite a while ago when the mapping came out. Yeah. Uh, you no. Know, yeah, it was uh, you know, when you've learned bodies of water like Leach and Malax and St. Clair through trial and error before all the stuff came out and and you've got many many hours in learning those structures and the and the hotter spots on certain winds and this that and the other at least at least that information so far is not out uh in some kind of electronic form uh certain winds and currents that develop makes some spots better that's that's basically a little bit of knowledge that's that's left that the machines can't tell you, but it, it literally changes everything. And, and I, I, I was upset and grumpy. I know I ran into you when uh, all of a sudden this mapping came out and <laughs> you literally had a situation where the average angler who would go out and, and buy that chip for the first time was as good or even better than me because there was things that showed up on the mapping that I hadn't even figured out on some of the monster lakes like Malax. And I was like, holy cow, I can't even believe this, how accurate this is. They're not perfect. In some cases, they're better than others. But frankly, it's amazing to me uh, how accurate some of it is. So it really, it, it really has changed the game. Is it, is it good or bad? So there's one side of me that hates it. I would actually honestly rather go back to the uh, well tougher guesswork, figure it out on your own. But on the other hand, it's there. You can't blame the companies for putting it out. It's amazing. And if you get stubborn and just refuse to use it, like I'd like to do, uh, you're going to get your butt kicked, frankly. Yeah. Uh, so I, it's still not going to make them bite, but uh, it has made these fish a lot more educated. That's why it's, it, it's really, really changed the game trying to figure out what, what lures and what methods, uh, you know, are going to work on fish. The one thing that I can say as a, as a grumpy old guy, just the other day, we were, we were fishing a big weed bed. And there was a young guy and his, his wife or girlfriend out there. We had a nice chat with them. They're real nice people. But this kid was ripping soft plastics through the weeds that literally my old back, I just, I, I'm not going to do it anymore, dude. I can't. <laughs> but that was, it was, I, I love watching that kind of stuff. We were on kind of the bad side of it because that's what was working and nothing else was. But in a, in a time period of 20 minutes, or we were using a bunch of other stuff, basically doing the same thing, we watched this guy. He only caught one, but he got four hits in a 20-minute in a period uh, when, you know, we were trying bucktail topwater, uh, you know, stuff running up over the weeds, not as, not as fast, not quite as erratic. And you watch that happen. So it's, to now me... This- this this if was a per- get educated. You're going to see more of that. I see. So this was a person using that forward facing sonar. No, it, this was strictly strictly tactic. Very very big weighted soft plastic. 
but he was just ripping it. Oh, no kidding. Down into the weeds and literally ripping it through. Uh, so it was, it was very, very situational with regard to lure presentation only. It was fast. It was super erratic. And it's something that, you know, it just, it hurts. You got to be young to do it. It sounds like so. It sounds like Van Dam, you know, like how, how Van Dam would approach muskies as far as like it's like a just a you know it's like a seek and destroy kind of mentality. Yeah, and you'll see that with uh, uh, speed. Uh, sometimes, obviously, you want to slow way down as well. But I mean, you know, the the difference between somebody uh, using a bucktail at a medium speed retrieve and just burning it as fast as you possibly can. Same thing with a paddle tail or whatever it might be. Uh, obviously, there's swim baits. There's a lot of different things. So they're but, uh, they're just getting there. You think what's happening in that situation? And those fish are just they're just triggering more. Like I mean, yeah. That and and it's and that's what's so fascinating. I've, I've, I'm sure I've talked to you about this. Um, is like when Van Dam, you know, I've I've worked a ton with Van Dam. Van Dam was like the one in the bass fishing world, at least, that realized like he could. It's a it's almost like a mathematical equation, right? Like if if I'm I've got this day of eight hours, or less than eight hours, typically in a tournament day, or I've got this amount of time. And if I present my bait in front of as many fish as possible, and if I'm really good at triggering fish, if I work that bait in a way that can trigger those fish, I will have this like a mathematical re- equation. I will, I will have a better chance of bringing more fish at the end of the, the way. Like he's, it's his, his approach. And now everybody's like this. I, I told Van Dam uh, early this year um, after he'd really gotten, he was really close on the, uh, to, to making the cut, but he didn't make it. And afterwards he was really frustrated. And I, and I said to him, you know, I'm, I said like the competition's so good right now. And I was like, the, you've made all these guys, you know, you've made all these guys that are, that are, you know, that are such hard competition now. And it's because he was, he, you know, and it seems like this is, it's like now in the musky world, it's like, if you, you know, you hit, you, you fish a lot of places fast and you fish aggressively and you're using like triggering retrieves, you know, you can, you can, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a tactic and it could be really effective. It's interesting to see that that's like hitting the, the musky world. It sounds like. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and, and to me, that's just, that's a combination of more anglers, better mapping, uh, you know, the, the imaging, uh, everything that's out there. So there's, there's more people that are a lot better at it with better tools, wasting less and less time. They're on fish all the time. And these, these fish get educated to whatever degree. I, I, I don't know. They, you know, you don't think they think, but they have to, to a certain extent. It's just, you know, they get used to certain presentations and you'll still have those windows we talked about earlier where they'll literally light up and they'll bite just about anything. At, at, at times, I'm sure they'd bite a sock or whatever you do. <laughs> yeah. it, it's pretty rare these days, I guess, to a certain extent. But, you know, the, there are times when literally everything works, the window's just open. But there's a lot of times where, you know, that story I just told you from the other day where it's really specific. It's a certain lure type and a certain method that's literally, it's getting down there. And I think because it's so aggressive, they might not be real active, but when you get lucky and land it right on one's head, you just rip through a weed and it pulls out and it drops right within a foot of a fish. Boom. That same fish is not going to come up and grab a bucktail running above, but because it was aggressive and reactionary and just right there all that fish need to do is dart up a foot and grab it they're going to do it and and that kind of stuff is uh is always really interested me to to watch and 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 see when it's something that specific that's working and that's the only thing working and i've seen that over the years where it's 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 almost profound and you wonder how many days you've spent on the water where you could have caught two or three and you caught none, but you 
you know, you maybe just didn't try the right thing. There's on most days, there's probably something that would work, but you didn't figure it out. You didn't try it. You know? But what I what I would say is like for you to for you to talk about a guy fishing aggressively and 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 ripping you know ripping a bait through through weeds and like your your back can't handle that you you wouldn't be able to do it that's saying a lot coming from you because you're like in you know we've talked about this I have a hard time calling fishermen athletes right but I would put you in the athlete category like you're like you can you're a, you're an athlete you're a real like some of these bass fishermen with beer guts talk, saying they're athletes, get out of here. You're an athlete, man. Ah, 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 ah. You know, they have not they have in their, they're, you know, listen, I love these guys, but you know, they have in their, their profile, like athlete, you know, and I, I, I see them, you know, heading to the, the, the um, Burger King, you know, after the tournament or something, <laughs> I'm like, come on now. But I mean, that is saying something, the fact that, you know, that, that, um, you know, you, you witnessed this guy fishing that aggressively that hard and you were impressed. That's saying something. That's really saying something. Oh, I, you know, that's, you fish hard, man. I mean, you, oh, yeah. you bust your ass, you yeah. know? So that's really, I'd li- I mean, I'd love to see this guy fish because it had to be something. And that's the difference too in the, in the, in the bass world as a, you know, as opposed to the musky world. Yeah. It's, it's one thing to be aggressive and make a ton of casts and rip and make really aggressive presentations, you know, triggering presentations in the bass world, doing that in the wall or excuse me, in the, in the musky world is a whole different thing, much bigger rods, obviously much heavier, you know, presentations, lures. I mean, that's a totally different thing to keep up that, you know, that pace or whatever, that kind of presentation speed and tempo using musky gear. Oh, it's hard. Well, that's the reason my back's bad. You know, I did it for years, you know, and it is, it's, it's somewhat of an endurance and a, and a physical game in a lot of cases, you know, we've got unbelievably gaudy and large lures we use, you know, they're the, the advent of one pound soft plastics was, already about a decade ago yeah and that's something i found frankly i just you know I, i'm accepting the fact that i'm not going to do that to catch a muskie because it hurts but it hurts. <laughs> and, and and that's the guys that really consistently get a lot of big fish i think in a lot of cases that's that's why i mean if you can aggressively fish a really big bait like that and do it for long hours uh, a lot of that's just physical and mental to be able to do that. And, and you're going to catch more big fish, big fish do react to those big targets like that. And in a world where there's a million baits spinning around, I think it's, it even becomes more of a factor, uh, you know, pre- presentations that are unique, aggressive and big, they, they do get it done. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. If you've enjoyed our content, please consider subscribing to another fishing podcast on iTunes, which is available also on just about every major podcasting platform. We'd love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Angling Uploaded, and for exclusive benefits, become a member on Patreon. So go to patreon.com and search Angling Uploaded, become a member. Oh, God, we love you if you do that. Thanks, guys.